Oh, was I supposed to sing that? No. It's a song. I know. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Hina Matsuri. Okay. And this here is Frank wearing his Philadelphia... Um, jacket we're all wearing the green today is it because it's march it's international cerebral palsy awareness month oh i thought green is it, is it a green ribbon for it or something oh it is <laughs> no it's not yes it's a green it's a green ribbon but it's also saint patrick's month it's here so a lot of green yeah um march is you know why because march is is the transition from from white snow to green pastures all the birds are singing and all the trees are budding. And all the children are crying. <laughs> What's happening? It is a Thursday, a beautiful green Thursday, green filled with envy. Oh, so envious over no, everybody everything today. Everything is going crazy. It's it's a double three. It's three, three. Three, three. March 3rd. March 3rd. Yeah. May the 3rd be with you. Nope. And um, double third day, double third festival is um, a Chinese festival. That's not today. <laughs> when is it? It's the Chinese calendar. So I think it's April. Oh. But it's the thir- it's their third day of their third month. Okay. Okay, so we couldn't use that one. Now, that's just a ancient calendar, right? Like the Chinese... no they're not really living. No, I think they do. Well, no, you mean like in banks and stuff? Yeah, like they I still don't... say it's April 3rd, right? I think so. I knew somebody who they did celebrate their birthday on the correct Chinese but day. it would be the same day. It would just be called something different. I don't know. But instead, let's just go to Japan. Let's go. Okay. Tokyo. And, and my name today, Hina Matsuri, which means doll festival. Oh. And March 3rd is the doll festival. It's doll? Gr- D-O-L-L? D-O-L-L. Doll. Doll? <laughs> You're a doll. It's a girl's day. It's girl's day in Japan called Hina Matsuri. Guys can play at dolls. Um, um, you will have to wait until May 5th. That's For what? Boys Day. G.I. Joe Day? Why Why are we gendering? Well, you know what? This is toys. traditional. This is very traditional. Okay. They do have, um, I believe they, ch- they took the Boys Day and made that Children's Day. So the boys lose their day. So now the girls have their day and then the children double up. Japan? <clears throat> Figure it out. No, I like it. May 5th is going to be um, Boys Day, also called Children's Day. And on May 5th. They dress up little warrior dolls and they, and they, okay. So you ever see the, um, when I think it's an emoji, the, the, the fish flag, the carp. Okay. It's like, looks like, looks like a wind sock. It's like a colorful fish and it's, and it flies in the wind. They're carps and, um, carps mean something in, um, Chinese legend. Um, Japanese. No, that's Chinese. You're bouncing. You're bouncing from the Asian countries. In Japan, the carp is thought to be the symbol of strength, courage, and success because of the Chinese legend that a carp swam upstream and became a dragon. So if on May 5th, we can can have Boys Day or Children's Day, it's going to be about carps. But today is is not that. Today is March 3rd, the Doll Festival, Girl Day. Okay. If you have a little girl in your um, family, in your household, in Japan, they celebrate them. Nice. Separately. And um, so in February, you get these dolls. And it's going to be like the emperor and empress. And it, it's um, it's a tiered setup. And then you set them up. And so everything should be set up March 3rd. And you have the mochi, 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 little cakes. And you have rice wine and rice cakes and everything like this. But if you don't put them away by March 4th, your daughter will be unmarried longer than she should be. <laughs> this seems like a lot of pressure to be celebrating. No, it's fun and beautiful. Hina Matsuri. I bet there's like older brothers that like keep it out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting married. Um, okay. So you're a little bit not sure what's going on there. So instead, we'll just say happy birthday, Florida. What? States have birthdays now? For their statehood. Oh, we bought it from Mexico or we annexed it. <clears throat> Was it Mexico? In... What? Mexico? Didn't Mexico own... Or Spain owned Mexico and also owned Florida. I have a list for you. And this is um, 
when they became a state and then the first settlements, if that's yeah. what you were thinking. So today, happy birthday. They just say happy birthday to Florida. March 3rd, 1845. So they're 177 years they've been part of the United States. And you, yeah, so in 1565, they were actually settled. St. Augustine. From, by Spain. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but happy birthday, Florida. People give Florida, Florida so much trouble. And they've been a state longer than a lot of the states that we don't give trouble. What do you mean we get in trouble? Um, Everyone like insults Florida. Yeah, but not because they're new. I, I don't mean because they're new, but I just mean like, come on. They've been a state for 177 years. Leave them alone. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And if you look at the very last one on the list, I think it's Puerto Rico. And talk about a new state or an old state. Puerto Rico was 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 a state before. Well, I don't know if they're considered a state, but they had statehood. They're a territory. Way before those last five. States 1898 that we're familiar with that's true why aren't they a state yet they were had like they were there like a hundred years before alaska and hawaii yeah May. but of course pennsylvania like we're number two delaware says it's the first state we're only five days behind them we are and they don't really say that on the license plate no we should get like second state license <laughs> plates that'd be something no two is not a winner and three no one remembers is that a song? Yeah. What is, who sings that? Two is not a winner and three no one remembers. I am number one. Two is not a winner. And three. I thought it was like a is it Nelly? The school kids would sing. No, that's all I have. You're just throwing stuff around. I have Hina Matsuri and I have Happy Birthday Florida. It's March 3rd, 3322. Two. You know, I like numbers. 1100. 3322. Well, um, yeah, that's all I've got. Well, thank you for coming to the Kirk and Crow podcast. No, I'm just kidding, guys. It is my favorite day. It is a glorious day because it is Thursday. And on Thursdays, we only do one thing besides talk about mochi balls. (laughs) So mochi, is that just the outs? Because I know like the little ice creams mochi. Yeah. But you said mochi cakes. Yeah, I think... Um, is it the outside, the flour it's sort that, of... It's not flour. That's rice. Rice. Yeah. The glutinous, sugared... Um, like it's like fondant. Material, right. Okay. And that on anything. So it would be mochi cake. Yeah, I guess. Mochi so. ice Whenever cream. Whenever you use that substance, yeah. Okay. But nobody eats mochi on its own. Well, I think it's like tofu. I think you have to, you have to flavor it. And yeah. Make it, make it something that you want. But I think it's just the... Consist- it's one of those... Like um, lobster or something. Like you just love the texture. Soft. Yeah. Pillowy. Yeah. Yep. Well, wait, we ate mochi on the show before. Yeah, we did. We did. Guys, it is Thursday, my favorite day of the week. And what we do here on Thursday is we have a little thing called Walk Through Thursday. Roll. And we're back. Last week, we screwed, you know, we, we. What we do? Scrambled it. It was Wednesday. Oh, yeah, because it was the great days of twos. Yeah. Well, today is Walkthrough Thursday on an actual Thursday, so roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun, because Walkthrough Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is Walkthrough Thursday. Oh my goodness gracious, I am happy to be alive. What are we doing, Walkthrough Thursday? Don't answer that, I'll tell you. <laughs> we open up the Bible right in front of Frank's face. The Bible is open. Once the Bible is open, we pick a verse. Not an entire story. Not just a one word like Wednesday. We pick a verse. Could be from any book. Yeah, place your bets now. What book do you think is going to be about today? You have a 1 in, what, 36 chance? You have a 1 in 36 chance. But once we get this verse, we try to break it down. We try to get meaning out of each individual word from this verse not overarching themes we love the bible for its overarching themes we don't want to take things out of context but we want to get value where value is given get a little personal message from said verse and we are going to do that with you and the great thing about the bible is it's a living word so it might mean something to me today you know uh, horoscopes get out of here how about daily bible verses what does this mean to me today And you might be watching this and hear it and say, that's the verse I needed to hear. But it means something totally different, and that is okay. So sit back, relax, 
and watch us go through this verse sentence by sentence, line by line, word by word, syllable by syllable, letter by letter, and just break it down and have fun. Yep. It's like break dancing. We're break dancing through the Bible. Break reading. <laughs> Let's get right into it, shall we? Today we are reading, why is no papers being handed to me? I forgot to do that for you. Um, as DJ Vince says, the word is definitely good. The word is definitely good. Um, my- here, yours are upside down, that's why. So um, there you go, the circled situation. Ahem, we're reading from a book we have not read from. Wait, whoa, there's, there's, there's some there's Don't more- worry about those things. They're, 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 extra, well, huh. they're, they're footnotes. Ah. Don't worry. Just the circle, I said. (laughs) Okay. Circle makes a square. We're reading from 1 Samuel. Now, when the number comes before it, it means there's multiple books of Mm -hmm. of said book. Mm -hmm. So this is of the first book of Samuel. Right. So it's 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8. Right. So the second chapter, verses 7 and 8. And is this a song? It is. It's the song of Hannah. The song of Hannah. Ever heard of it? I'm sure I've read it, but I don't remember it. Okay. And who is Hannah? Hannah is Samuel's mother. So he wrote it and I guess he heard it or he found out about it. Um, Hannah is Samuel's mother. Okay. Hannah, I was going to say something about that, but now I can't remember. <laughs> cut that part out. <laughs> it's not getting cut out because we forget things too. We're mm-hmm. only human. I think. I'm only human. Okay, yeah, it just says Hannah's the mother of Samuel, and it's called Hannah's Prayer, the Song of Hannah, or Hannah's Song of Thanksgiving. And I have more to say about that, so do you just want to read first? Or? Yeah, I just want to read first. <clears throat> okay. All right, like I said, 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8, little short one, <clears throat> the Song of Hannah. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, and he has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. Oh, was I supposed to sing that? No. It's a song. I know. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. <laughs> Am I going to cut all this out? No. He seats them with princes and he has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's and them on them he has set the world. <laughs> Do you think that's how she sung it to him? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. He was, uh, I can't remember her husband's name, but she was his favorite, even though he had a first wife, second wife, he had another wife. There was two wives, Hannah and I forget the other lady. You just said it was his mom. Oh, sorry. His wife. I mean, it's, it is Samuel's mom, but Samuel's dad had two wives. Samuel's dad had two wives, both of which had kids, he had kids with. Well, Hannah couldn't have children. So the story of Samuel's a different story where she, she prays and she's praying at the temple and she comes out and the guy thought she was um drunk because she was weeping and and so samuel the name of samuel actually means god heard Mm. because she prayed so hard for him but yeah the other the other wife even though the other wife had children he used to give hannah double the gifts (laughs) he was her favorite (laughs) she was his favorite sorry okay so what i wanted to say about the song of hannah as you were like what are these papers behind there the paper behind there is the full obviously this this i'm glad you didn't sing the whole thing from <laughs> one to um, probably just one to ten. Um, that's the full song. But that's not the point. The it's it's song of Hannah is important. And also. Um, wait, it, wait, wait. I'm so confused. What? So we read an excerpt. Yes. Out of the song of Hannah. Yeah, because we only read. A, we don't read. Oh, OK. So the song of Hannah is very long. Yeah. Huh. I thought you knew that because you. You said it's verse 7 and 8. Where'd you think verse 1 to 6 went? I thought that was him introducing the song of Hannah. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. No. See the dot, dot, dot. I, I, it's an epsilon. I see the song epsilon. song of Hannah is a long song. I just excerpted this piece. Okay. I liked it because it said ash heap. And we're talking about ashes yesterday. Ash heap. But. <laughs> ah, sheep. Ah, sheep. Um, interesting thing about the song of Hannah is. 
they compare it, number one, to the Song of Mary, which I think we did before because that's where the Hail Mary Is that comes the one from. that goes like, Mary, did you know? No. It's um, it's Luke 1, 46 to 55, Mary's song. And that's where she's, it's her song of Thanksgiving to God. But more similar, if, if you look at the bottom of your page, Psalm 113 is very similar to the song of Hannah, even to the point, look at verse seven and eight is almost identical to her verse seven and eight. Oh, uh, yeah. Like seats them with princes in the ash heap. Like almost Who came exactly. first? You, don't you know your order of the, the books of the Bible? I think um, 1 Samuel came before I think so too. Psalm 113. So yeah, Song of Hannah, verse 7 and 8, matches Psalm 113, verse 7 Which and Which probably was a song as well. Yeah. Maybe you're just repeating it. Psalm, um, you got access to the biblical yeah, works. Right. And then um, obviously Luke came after both of those. I know that order. And the New Testament echoes the old testament yes it does a lot but yeah that's i think that's my background information about the song of hannah samuel's mother who she was a big fan of god's and he granted her um her prayer request which would be samuel well without further ado let's walk through it shall we? samuel's super important he is super important. judaism um islam christianity mm-hmm. the trifecta yes the Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. So what does that mean? Are, are you going to answer? Or would you like me I to thought say you were that? taking a dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was you were making a dramatic pause. Blink, blink. <laughs> Help. Um, you're asking me what that means. Would you like me to just talk? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. What it's saying is everything's from God, okay. right? It, uh, uh, it's the juxtaposition of poverty and wealth, both sides, and humbles and exalts. I mean, like to humble someone and to praise someone. It's like, I, I think like, the best way to put it is it's not saying like he, it's like God giveth and God taketh away. Right. Um, But it's not in the sense of like, he punishes and he commends. It's it's just everything's from God. Right. Like, people often think this is from God and this is God forgetting about me. Right. right. And then this is like you li- if you were living on Earth, like everything is being done by God, or you know everything was created by Him. You know, poverty and, and wealth and you know, hum- humbleness and, and exaltment. It's not you are you, you are being or you are being exalted and that person god doesn't know your name you know because you're in poverty yeah and that's really important especially for hannah because um you know i think we talked about this before about praying do you pray only when you're happy do you only do prayers of thanksgiving and do you um is it or other way around we would say do you only pray when you're asking for things yes all right. Oh, yeah. Do you only pray when you ask for this? And once you get it, it's like, oh, I, I'm, right. I'm good. Right. So um, Hannah could have just made her song to be God gives and God rewards and God saves and heals. And, and that would be true. And yes. that would be great. But, you know, in, in, a, in a Job way, it's mm-hmm. like everything is from God. So yes. he is there for the <clears throat> the poor. He's he's there for the highs and lows. Highs and lows. Highs and lows. Rivers and valleys. <clears throat> yeah. Mountains and valleys. Right. Hills? Mountains and... Valleys. Ain't no valley, Lord. Mountain. Okay. High enough. <clears throat> he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. Take the floor. Sure. Um, we talked about ashes yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> And back to you, tennis. Okay. Thank you. So he raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. This, I mean, obviously, I think those are two things are redundant. Like kind of the first line, it said a little two different things. This is kind of saying like the exact same thing twice, but it's the idea that he lifts people up when they're in need, right? Like the poor from the dust. And we talked about like like what dust and, and ash 
Rick represented in our yesterday's podcast on Ash Wednesday, but it was the idea of being humbled and like, oh, I am I'm in sackcloth right. and and ashes and and God lifts people up from that. It's He's there to to grab you by the hand and say, "Let's go to the top." Yes, I even see Adam in that in that line. Um, from created from dust right. and clay and right. So he a rib. <laughs> Out of out of the dust, he he brought Adam, um, lifted the needy from the ash heap, and again, Hannah is saying God is in the hash ah uh, <laughs> in the hash heap in the hash heap <laughs> in the hashish. He's, he's, <laughs> he's in the ash heap. He's in the dust. If you are on a on a uh, throne, you know God is there, but He's also if you're if you're in the gutter, He's there. Yes. So this is a continuation. This is all still of eight. Um, he seats them with princes and he has them inherit inherit a throne of honor. And so that's a continuation of, of what he, he's lifting these people up and he's sitting them. And it's it's that idea of, once again, like uh, with God, there is no earthly class systems. And it's like, you can be, like I said, in... in, in the dust in the dirt with with your sackcloth on and god will lift you up and sit you with the princes right you know uh it kind of reminds me of um of the 23rd psalm when when he says you know uh what does he say <laughs> it's a whole lot what part let me sit some down oh and then ta- i'll prepare a table before you table prepare, prepare that table before you your cup runneth over and it, i'll and, anoint your head with oil and you yeah yeah Treat like treat it like a king. Yes. And and throne of honor because yes, you can get earthly riches like Solomon. Um, but also, you know, he gives you what you need, but more importantly, would be the honor, would be the, you know, the blessings that cannot Yeah, and I feel like that's what's always like you know, what always comes back to like, oh, he sees you with the princes and stuff. But I think this is all very symbolic, right? Mm-hmm. Like Will Jesus or God, will God um, make you wealthy? It's like, oh, oh, but then you can add something. It's like, well, he'll make you spiritually wealthy. Right. And then you'll never be poor. You right, know? right. And um, it's that it's that idea. And it's like, I think that with that, the throne of honor. And right. It's like, are you going to be in an actual throne? Maybe not. But with God, you'll be sitting in a throne of honor And that's of important to remember. Him. Because yeah. if you think... That he only rewarded you if you have five cars in the garage. You would feel forgotten. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh, I have no money in my bank account and I'm sitting on a folding chair. And it's like, but you're spiritually wealthy and you're sitting on a throne of honor. Yes. With God. Yes. You got to think of it like that. I will. You better. <laughs> I am. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. And on them he has set the world. And this, perfect, is going back to what we were saying in the beginning, right? We're like We said the Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and exalts. Saying every, we, we, we say everything is from God, right? Like it's not, the good things are from God. Everything else is not God's. Right. You know, like uh, wealth is, is with God. You know, um, exaltment is from God. If you're being humbled and you're in poverty, God has forgotten about you. No, not at all. He's in all of it. In the end, the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. So God created the, the, these foundations and on them he has set the world. So like there's nothing like in the world that's not on the foundation of God. Right. So there's not a place that you can point at and say, you know, you know, in uh, the Lion King, when it's like, our kingdom ends at those that dark place over there. Right. Don't go over there. There, there is no shadow or no dark spot that's not on the foundation in which God set the earth. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, you can't dispute the importance of the foundations yeah. of the earth because no matter what's on there, mm-hmm. the most beautiful palace or you know the most gorgeous 
Lee manicured um, botanical garden or whatever. All of it is still only there, only capable of being there, only being held down by the gravity of, yeah. of, of, of what he placed and, and how it was all set up. So, and um, yesterday, the, the ashes again, you know, everything, everything comes from something and everything keeps turning. So it's the same, we have the same water from, from the beginning of time, um, all kept, all, all created and kept for us by God. Yes. And that's the other thing about the foundations. And you know what's funny? So th- with the foundations, um, it is that idea that you'll never see the foundation, right? Right. Like it, we're in a house right now. You've never seen the foundation, but it's the reason this house is standing. Right. But for so easily, you know, in like poverty rather than wealth, mm-hmm. we can say we only see the house around us. And it's like, Oh, like this house is, is you, you get in this earthly mindset and it's like, you're not seeing the spiritual foundation underneath. So it's like, I only see the house around me. Right. I only see these walls <clears throat> and you can get caught in that. And mm-hmm. especially, you know, in times of, of hardship and it's like, you know, the God's not here. And it's like, he's the foundation that's holding this house up. Right. And the reason I'm saying that is because Ash Heap, yesterday's podcast, we talked about ashes. We said, why do people get the ashes? Oh, it's kind of morbid from ash to ash. And we said it's a a reminder that this body is temporary. Our soul is forever. And so to not get caught on. Like, like, don't worry so much about the temporary being your body. Worry about your soul, which can be it's a reminder. Right. Is not that body to ash soul forever comparable to a house to its foundation? Yes. It's 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 sort of the same concept of. Right. This house isn't what matters. It, 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 nothing on this, nothing that was the world was being set matters without the foundation. That's what's important, and it's those spiritual concepts that we need to remember. Poverty is not really that important. Wealth isn't that important. Right. But everything comes from God. Everything's on that foundation, and that's what the thing to remember is. It is. Um, one more thing to say about Hannah. You know, like I said, she was the favored wife of her husband. And um, so she really didn't have to pray for He wasn't punishing her for not having um, a child, you yeah. know, back then. Um, but when she did pray, she, she, she prayed for a son, but said, I want to give him back to, you know, when you would um, even like, uh, what's his name? The Dalai Lama, the child goes to the church. Yes. So he, she said, if you give me a son, I will give him back to serve the Lord, which she did. And of course, Samuel became so incredibly important in the story leading up to jesus yeah so she prayed for something to give the lord yeah you know yeah and isn't that isn't that always you know how how you see these success stories where it's like it's personal but it's always that honor Mm -hmm. thing that puts you in, in the favor and it's like with with so she wanted that and obviously lose my train of thought here but i'm fine same way Solomon wanted wisdom to know the Lord and to know what, what he's meant to do. And then he was also given wealth. And and it's right. like, if you put your priorities in the right, right place, and that just goes back to the foundation, you know, like it's our own foundation in our faith. And it, it's, you're building that relationship with God. And then everything on top of it is on a strong, strong right. foundation. These people that we're talking about, Hannah, the, the way she was praying or Sa- or Solomon, their foundation was the Lord first. Right. And then what they're asking for was always through a lens of that. Right. And it was, I know you, I know everything is sent by you and I'm, yeah. I'm asking you this. Yeah. And then he ended up, she gave Samuel to the church and she ended up um, having more children. So also, not that if you pray for children, you get children. But when you do, when, when God, when you th- ask, please, God, can I have something? He gives you so much more than you even asked for. An abundance. The abundance is clear. But guys, that's one Samuel two seven to eight. It but is. it's not the full song of Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> I learned recently. So if you want to read the full song, if you want to hear you sing it, if you want to hear me <laughs> sing it, go to, go to my Patreon and pay for that. <laughs> so the full song is one Samuel two, two two. I don't know. It's one. No, one Samuel two. Did I even put the numbers? You have to look at the tiny little one numbers. to ten. And it's very long, but go check it out. Go sing it to yourself. 
I think it probably sounds better in like Hebrew. But anyway, guys, we'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. It's gonna be it's a really special one because it's Dr. Seuss week. Yeah, read it. Read, it was, it was read. Dr. Seuss Day yesterday. It was his birthday. It's his birthday week, so we're gonna be celebrating him. We should have read the book Happy Birthday to You this week. Happy birthday to Florida. We could have read it to them. Well, now we can't race anyone, but you can read it back <laughs> no, on the tomorrow is, um, Dr. Seuss playlist. Tomorrow is Vermont's birthday, so we could just sing it to them. All right. <laughs> well, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Um, be safe. Have fun. And go and rejoice, why don't you? Peace.